I'm here with Alexander Mercury, editor in chief of the Duran Alexander. Okay, we have some um, some movement as to what's going on with the uh, strike on the Saudi oil fields, the uh, the Aramco fields, the facilities on Saturday. Um, it looks like that it looks like Trump is not going to to take any military action for the moment. He's he's announced that he's going to be placing more sanctions on Iran. So we have that. We have Mike Pompeo saying that Iran, you know, committed an act of war. I think that's to be expected coming from Mike Pompeo. Uh, we also have the Saudi Defense Ministry holding a press conference today showing the, the debris that it gathered from the weapons that were used to, to attack the Aramco facilities. And um, let me read you an excerpt from Zero Hedge Alexander, which has a, a just a three bullet point list as to what the Saudis had. They had it laid out on a table, all this debris to make the case that it was indeed Iran. That uh, and, and I want to be very clear: they said Iran sponsored the uh, the attack, not did it. I want to be very clear: it didn't come from Iran. They didn't say that. They said Iran sponsored it. So you have that wording. So let me read you this Zero Hedge excerpt. Showcased among the debris can be seen what looks like a ballistic missile among multiple smaller drones, including, according to the statements, 18 Delta-winged UAV plus 7 cruise missiles fired, direction of flight plus range indicate attacks did not originate from Yemen, but from the north, and sophistication of weapons including GPS guidance giving high accuracy. So that's just a quick uh, overview as to what Saudi Arabia was kind of laying out to point the finger on Iran. What do you make of uh, all the all the various news um, news topics that have been uh, coming out regarding this story? Right. I mean, the over overwhelming take I'm, get take I'm getting from all of this is that Donald Trump and the Saudis do not want to go at the moment into a war with Iran. I mean, Donald Trump has announced sanctions against Iran. He has not talked. He has not given any indication that there's going to be a military attack on Iran. The Saudis were given the perfect opportunity to say, yes, this is the Iranians doing it. And here's the proof. By the way, I should say the, 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 the you know, the cobbled together things they provided would convince no one of anything very much. I mean, it was a very, very unconvincing display. But as you absolutely rightly say, they stopped short of identifying uh, that it was Iran. And to, I think, reinforce this image that we are now backing off from an attack on Iran or from a war with Iran. We're getting all these reports from the Saudis that, in fact, the damage will all be repaired within a few weeks, that oil production will be back to normal by the end of September, and that we really don't have any reason to be unduly concerned. So there is a massive attempt by Donald Trump and by the Saudis to play this down. And the Iranians, who are obviously watching and following this event very closely, are going to be assessing the implications of that very carefully. They will be saying to themselves, clearly, there is no appetite to attack us. And clearly, uh, the initiative is passing increasingly to us. That's what I think the big take of the events of the last few hours is. Okay, Alexander, there was an article uh, posted by Tom Luongo, who's one of our favorite writers on this story. And he he asks the what I think is the most relevant question in all of this, and that is qui bono? How does, how does Iran benefit from having either, let's just take the most extreme case, committing the attack, actually doing it, to say what Saudi Arabia said, sponsored it. So in both scenarios, how does Iran benefit from this, given the fact, and uh, Tom argues that fact, that no. momentum was in their favor? You know, it seemed like Trump was going to be meeting with Rouhani in the UN. It seemed that, you know, no matter what sanctions the US was imposing on Iran, Iran was finding a way to maneuver around them. They were making yeah. deals with China, with Russia. I mean, the tide was turning towards their favor. Why would they either do this attack or sponsor the attack? 
Yeah, right. The first thing to say is that some of these things that are happening, the deals with China, which I think, by the way, have basically been confirmed. I, I say that because after we did our video, right, I saw some articles appearing which called into question whether there were, in fact, deals between Iran and China to develop Iran's oil industry underway. And now they've spread to other um journals in the petroleum industry, including oilprice.com. And I don't think there's any real doubt anymore that the Chinese are indeed committing to pressing ahead with this major oil investment program in Iran's economy. And it also turns out that the Russians are pressing ahead with the free trade agreement with Iran that is being negotiated between Iran and uh, the Russian-led Europe Eurasian economic community. So um, these big deals have not in any way been affected by this attack. And I'm pretty sure that the Iranians, if it was the Iranians, would have calculated in advance that they would not be. I mean, provided they gave themselves enough deniability, they would not be. Now, in relation to the United States, I think it's become very clear over the last few hours what the Iranian game plan is. I, I, I think that there is a very widespread misconception that the Iranians want to talk with the United States and that it was the Iranians who were holding out for the summit meeting between Donald Trump and Rouhani at the General Assembly. The leader of Iran, who is not Rouhani, but Ayatollah Khamenei, has now ruled out that agreement. He's made it absolutely clear that the stated Iranian policy, which had been announced before, that Iran does not talk to the United States until the United States returns to the JCPOA, the Iranian nuclear deal, that that stated policy has not changed. And I think that from the Iranian point of view, the fact that this meeting between Rouhani and Donald Trump that was being talked about has been called off, and in fact, from what I can understand, it had never actually even been formally agreed is not something that they feel they have lost anything from because they never wanted it to happen in the first place because they, it would have been interpreted as a weakening position. Now, what it seems to me has come out of all of this affair is that the United States has been told by Iran very clearly we are not prepared to negotiate with you unless and until you change your policy radically towards us and rejoin the JCPOA. And at the same time, if the Iranians were responsible for this attack, and I still think at some level they probably were, they have called the US and Saudi bluff, as they will see it, because they have launched an attack on this vitally important Saudi oil installation, and there has not been the major retaliatory attack upon them that some people had been speaking about. Now, the Iranians have very good intelligence. They know very well what is going on within Saudi Arabia. They probably don't know what is going on within the United States. I don't believe that they have a sophisticated intelligence operation in the United States. But I think they've already assessed or calculated for some time that the United States, or at least Donald Trump, is not really pressing for an attack upon them. So I think that the cui bono argument that some people are making against Iran being responsible for this attack is not actually fully, fully accurate. I think the one thing that the Iranians would not have wanted is for them to be directly implicated in the attack, which is why they didn't claim responsibility. But the fact that the Houthis did claim responsibility inevitably links the attack to Iran. 
I, I want to dig in just a little deeper into this specific attack. And I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. What is the, the goal of committing this specific type of attack on these facilities? Is it number one, to try to put an end to the war in Yemen? That I understand. Is it number two, to, to send a message to Saudi Arabia that we can, you know, we can take you out. We have the capabilities with very advanced weaponry. And you guys, obviously, I think one of the big takeaways is that you guys don't have any defense capabilities. I mean, I think that became patently uh, clear. Is it to send a signal to Trump? In other words, we know that, you know, you're all, you're all talk and you're not going to do anything. You can't do anything. I mean, I'm, I'm trying this speci- because this was you've said you said it during one of our live streams. This appears to have been a very well planned attack, very well executed, using very very sophisticated weapons, very precise. So why why do this why do this now and why do it on these facilities? Was it for the reasons that I mentioned? Is it something more? It was Russia, yeah. and my final question, so you can tie it all together, Alexander, was mm. Russia and China in on it? Were they consulted? Right. Right. Did they help? Right. Right. I, all right. I think, I think to, to go back to the first part of your question, was it to end the war in Yemen? Was it to send a warning to the Saudis that, you know, Iran can attack any part of uh, Saudi Arabia's um, energy infrastructure? And was it also a message to Donald Trump? I think the answer is that it was all those things. If you want me to explain the specific timing, I think the person that it was most strongly directed against and who it would have weakened most is Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi crown prince, because it jeopardizes this flotation of Saudi Aramco, which was due to happen within a few weeks, and which um, Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, has staked the entire future of Saudi Arabia on. I think that explains the timing of this attack, because clearly, from his point of view, the the um, Aramco flotation is the single most important thing. It is his overriding priority, and he simply will not want a war at this time, which jeopardizes that flotation, and which puts any possibility that it might be called off uh, uh, makes that makes that possibility real. I think that was the time. That was what explains the timing behind it. Brilliant. I think. Brilliant. M- yeah. Is yes. It, it mean, I think most. Yeah. Yes. It was. I mean, it's extremely. I mean, can I just say, I mean, I, I, I know people have lots of views about the Iranians, but um, in terms of their understanding of Saudi Arabia, it is profound. And they are, you know, in yeah. these things, extremely intelligent people. They do want to see the war in Yemen end because they want to see a strong ally in Yemen, and the Houthis potentially are a strong ally in charge of Yemen, you know, in Saudi Arabia's soft underbelly. They do want to send a message to Donald Trump, because as I said, they've calculated that Donald Trump is perhaps, well, clearly doesn't want to war. I, I, I think one should be very, very careful, by the way, in saying, you know, that um, Donald Trump is, you know, all, all, all talk and no hat, as I've seen. I mean, I, I think that the, the, the Iranians know that you can ultimately push him too far, which is why they were careful if it was there. And I do think it was them at some level t- to hide it behind the Houthis and to give him enough nego- you know, space so that he wouldn't attack them. But I think the person this targeted, this primarily targeted, is the weak link in the chain of the alliance against Iran, the US, Saudi Arabia, and Israel, which is Saudi Arabia and its leader, the utterly incompetent and vainglorious prince, crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, who is, as I said, so dependent at the moment 
on the success of this Aramco flotation. Now, were the Russians and the Chinese consulted? I am absolutely sure that they were not. At any level, the Iranians would never have told either the Russians or the Chinese anything about this kind of operation, because they would know that if the Chinese or the Russians found out about it in advance, they would warn the Iranians against it, and that would create all kinds of diplomatic and political problems. I would add that the Russians and the Chinese, if the Iranians were planning anything like this, would not want to be told about it. Mm -hmm. So once again, by not telling them about it, the Iranians have given the Chinese and the Russians enough room so that the Chinese and the Russians can proceed with the massive deals with Iran that they are currently executing. The oil deal in relation to China, the free trade agreement, in relation to Russia. So I I think this has been very carefully thought through by some very clever people in Tehran. I think that, as I said, it it, it may not seem obvious, but there is a qui bono for Iran in all of this. Uh, Having said all of this, I do want to make it very clear. I mean, I don't I don't know. We're not an intelligence agency. Perhaps it was the Houthis all by themselves. I have difficulties believing that. Um, I have to say, for me, the evidence does point ultimately towards Iran. Yeah, it sounds like they game planned this very, very well. Yes. And it sounds like they're, I mean, it's just brilliant because it's a, it's a brilliant FU to MBS Yes. And it's all about money, right? When he's about to, to float Aramco and just make a killing on the flotation of exactly. Aramco and essentially also save the kingdom's you know, financial position because it's not doing so well uh, no, recently. I mean, not, the flotation's no, a huge deal. The, uh, the, the, flotation, the flotation is a huge deal. I mean, Saudi Arabia is practically, let's be quite clear about this, it, it is moving relentlessly towards bankruptcy. I mean, uh, uh, on the one hand, um, Mohammed bin Sal, MBS, wants this massive, grandiose industrialization program. At the same time, he's spending money recklessly on the war in Yemen. And, of course, the, 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 the other princes, the Saudi royal family and their various hangers-on, uh, um, are, are not prepared to cut back on their spending. And Saudi Arabia has these, this massive budget defense budget and budget on all sorts of other needs. So Saudi Arabia is is hurtling towards a prospective bankruptcy. Um, Oil prices are not high enough for the Saudis at the moment, even if they were pumping all their oil. And they need that flotation both to maintain solvency and for MBA to have any prospect of carrying out the industrialization program that he's so committed to. I mean, at this moment in time, Saudi Arabia's uh, uh, um, budget deficit with oil hovering around $60 a barrel is 7% of GDP. They can't cover that indefinitely. So they need that flotation. And this attack puts that whole flotation and their future in jeopardy. Yeah, very very well uh, game planned. And like you said, Alexander, I think you, you hit it spot on. You, you know, between the US, Israel and Saudi Arabia, it looks like Iran is, is taking out the weak link. And, and they exposed, they exposed for sure the weakness of MBS and Saudi Arabia. And, and like we said, you know, in the beginning of this program, they exposed what I think is a weakness in in the U.S. military industrial complex, or at least the U.S. defense systems installed in Saudi Arabia. Yes, yes. I mean, I I, I would stress if it was the U.S. itself controlling those defense systems. Right, right. I think it would I think it'd be different. Yeah, but they expose but, that overall you, weakness. In, exactly, in, in exactly. That, that link in the chain. That overall, exactly that link in the chain, it, and it is a serious problem. I mean, the Saudi military, as, by the way, MBS 
has actually admitted is the Saudi military, in spite of being the third most expensive military in the world, it sounds incredible to say this, but Saudi Arabia outspends Russia in terms of its defense procurement. I mean, you know, Russia, which is a military superpower, Saudi Arabia outspends it. And yet they can't even defend their most important oil facility. So, I mean, they are totally and completely exposed. And this has been extremely cleverly and ruthlessly done. And of course, the person who's left looking ridiculous is MBS, who uh, at this moment in time, I am sure, must be coming under a great deal of criticism from the other Saudi princes. Yeah, you know, buy some stock in Aramco, buy some stock in a company, Alexander, where the product can be, you know, blown apart at any moment. At any moment, that's the message. Well, indeed, well, indeed. exactly. So, what, what, what to do? Well, the answer is make peace with Iran. But yeah. is he able to do that? It's a good question. Well, I don't think he can actually. Yeah. No, he, can't. <laughs> or, he can, but it's a tall order. It's a, a tall order. is not the guy for that. No, no. No, no, All right. absolutely not. Alexander Mercurius, Editor-in-Chief of the Duran. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Click on the notifications bell to make sure you get notifications every time we push out a new video. And also, please donate to the Duran on PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar. You will find the links to those platforms also in the description box down below. And your donation really helps out this channel a whole lot. And something else that helps out this channel is when you go to the Duran shop and you pick up some magic mugs, which will make you a whole lot more intelligent as to what's going on in the world. And maybe if you drink from the mugs, Alexander, you'll actually know who who, who did this attack. Well, in, maybe. Well, indeed. I mean, this is the point. I mean, we're able to analyze these things so well uh, and discuss them so clearly because we drink from these magic mugs. And, you know, this is this is a magic mug. Um, as I said, 15 ounce porcelain mug, beautifully made, wonderfully crafted, incredibly good to handle. It's got Russian caravan tea in it. It's been a fairly cool day. This is what I've been drinking. And look who look whose badge is there. It's that of Russia's Alpha Force, the one of the best special forces units in the world. Uh, what's happened? What happened directly after this attack on the Saudi oil facilities? Putin was trolling MBS, telling him, you know, call us in. We'll, we'll put it all right for you. MBS can't do that. Not in the way that uh, um, um, Putin was saying. And of course, Putin knows that. So he was trolling him. Uh, by the way, I should add MBS telephoned to Putin. The two men have had a conversation, but uh, we don't really know very much about what they said. But these guys, the Alpha Force, they're a real army. Iran has a real army, not as good as this one, not, not as good as these guys. Saudi Arabia doesn't. I mean, these these people would take the Saudis to the cleaners if they were ever uh, if, if they were ever inflicted on them. So this is this is the kind of mug we have. We have real tough guy mugs here, um, along with our more cerebral ones. This is the other sort of Russian mug we have with uh, of the Federation, the Russian Federation symbol on it. So these are the brains. And this is then this is the fist. So there we are. <laughs> so you, you can get our mugs, you can get our shirts. I'm wearing this fantastic polo shirt. Alex is wearing a fantastic t shirt. They're one hundred percent cotton. They're beautifully stitched, incredibly elegant. As I said, I buy my suits from Savile Row. I get my sheet my uh, sh shirts from Turnbull and Asser in German Street. My ties from Chauvet, Place Vendôme in Paris, and I wear Duran shirts with pride. So that tells you how good they are. So by all means, buy your buy these shirts, buy buy these mugs, buy our books on RussiaGate and Brexit, buy our hoodies, our hats. Um, all our stuff is fantastic. Our customers think so. Our competitors who are trying and failing to copy them. Think so. Also, help the Duran go to our shop. Alex will tell you how. You will find a link to the shop in the description box down below. Alexander Mercurius, editor in chief of the Duran. Thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.